Good afternoon, friends of the Jose Manuel H. Garage channel. Look, I'm continuing with this topic of the Yosin 650 Aquila. Uh, I had a problem with the wiring. Uh, the speedometer wasn't working properly. I changed the wiring and in my rush. Uh, when connecting the positive and negative of the battery, it was at night. I was going very fast and I put the battery in the wrong way and then, of course, I shorted out the system. So, uh, of course, I couldn't test if it worked or not the first time, because when I shorted out I would press the button and nothing worked. Thank God. Then I checked everything and the fuse simply blew as it should. I changed the fuse and that was it. But one of the things I wondered was if the starter relay had broken. So, since I had another starter relay as a spare, well, I put in the other starter relay, it kept doing the same thing. Therefore, at first I ruled out that it was the starter relay, but of course, I decided to make a video on how to check starter relays, starter relay or solenoid, okay. Starter solenoid, what is the function of the starter relay? The starter relay's main function is to provide current to the starter motor to start the bike, but it provides current through a relay because a lot of current passes through it to move the starter motor and if that current intensity reached the starter button directly here, then the system would not be dangerous, okay? So, the starter relay simply allows less current to reach here and then when the order is given here to pass current, it passes it with more intensity. So, what does the starter relay consist of? Very simple, look, first let's see what it consists of. Very basically, without getting too carried away or going into great technical details, we'll see how to check it later. Look at the starter relay on one side. It has one of the connections up here, and the other connection goes from here to the starter motor to the positive terminal of the starter motor. The moment we close the circuit, energy passes to the starter motor and the starter motor turns the crankshaft to start the bike, okay? So, for that energy to pass, it will only pass when we are pressing the starter button. In other words, our signal to tell it whether or not to pass energy is with the starter button. The starter button will give us the signal. Look, I've also seen it mounted on the bike, which is continuity to the circuit, as we'll see throughout the video. So, this is connected to the positive terminal all the time. On one side it goes here to the positive terminal of the battery and on the other side it goes from here to the positive terminal of the starter motor, which is there. So, when the circuit is closed, that is, when the relay trips, the circuit is closed and therefore we have a positive current that goes directly from the battery to the starter motor, okay? And with this positive current from the starter motor, the starter motor moves because it is always connected directly to ground. So, the only thing missing is for the positive current to reach it so that it can move. The fact that this circuit opens or closes, that is, that the positive current from the battery passes to the starter motor, is achieved with the starter button. This starter button is what gives voltage or energizes the starter relay. Okay, by pressing this button, what we are doing is closing the circuit in such a way that the positive and negative currents of 12 volts reach the starter relay here. So, with the positive and negative currents of 12 volts reaching the starter relay, the starter relay would trip and while it is energized it will allow current to pass from the positive current of the battery to the positive current of the starter motor. So, we have a positive, which in this case and in the vast majority of cases of starter relays is a color other than green, and normally green is always negative, okay? We have a negative, green, and a positive, in this case, which is yellow-red. So if we supply positive and negative power, okay? If we supply this cable, the starter relay, we supply it with positive and negative power, this will trip and when the relay trips, that is, when the filaments come together, when the relay trips, it will allow current to flow, energy to the starter motor. And as long as we are energizing the starter relay here, that is, as long as there is a positive and negative signal, that will mean that they will come together here in the relay, 
the filaments will come together and will allow current to pass to the starter motor, and that is what we continue pressing the starter button. There we are talking about positive and negative. The moment we release the starter button, we stop energizing the relay. The relay trips and therefore does not allow power to pass to the starter motor. Okay? So, this would be the basic operation that does not present any major problems. How do we verify that it works? Well, the best way to verify that it works is by connecting it with the battery, positive to positive, negative to negative, and when we connect it, we hear a click here, okay? A click here means that it has actually tripped and the filament is connected. That would be the first way to check it. If we hear a click, in principle it is a good sign. And the second way to know that it works correctly is with the tester. We connect positive to positive or negative. Well, we put one probe to one of the poles and the other probe to the other pole. We put the tester or multimeter in continuity and every time it trips or we energize the relay, there should be continuity. That is, now there should be no continuity because it is not energized and the moment we energize it there should be continuity, that is, there will be a beep on our multimeter. Look, we are going to turn on the multimeter now and check it. We are going to turn it on, excuse me, we are going to turn it on continuity, okay? And let's see, we turn it on continuity here. And now we are going to see. I am going to put the alligator clips, which is more convenient with the alligator clips. Uh, one second I am going to put the alligator clips. Okay, well, I have already put these multimeter probes, ah, uh, with alligator clips instead of tips I can hook it up. So, I put one of the probes on one side of the starter strip and I put the other on. Now, when I touch it, if it had continuity it would sound. Do you see? If I touch it here, I am touching it. Excuse me, it is because I have not placed this little cable here correctly. Okay, look, the tester is working properly, okay? If there is continuity, it should sound, okay? So that there is continuity between the two, that is, for the current to flow and therefore power to the starter motor. There should be continuity here. There is no continuity, so right now the starter relay or solenoid would not be energized. Okay? So, if we energize, as we said, through the positive and negative of the starter relay with the battery, we should hear a click and we should also hear the continuity. First, we are going to do it without hearing the continuity. We are simply going to hear a click, okay? Look, since I have the positive and negative here with this type of terminal, it is complicated. Well, I recently bought some hooks on Amazon that work great some spikes that work great for this type of thing and that way we can more easily feed current to the connector and they are these two spikes okay i'm going to put the negative on the negative and the positive on the positive i'm going to do it and now we'll continue okay there you have it well i've already connected it as you can see i told you that the green one was the negative i've connected the negative and the positive one so here i have a battery with a little cable an alligator clip Let's connect it from the negative. See? From the negative to the negative. There we have it connected. And now, just by touching the positive here to the positive one, it should make a sound. Let's see if you can hear it well, like this. That's how it picks up everything. Yes. It should make a click. I'm going to be quiet so I can see if you can hear the click. Can you hear it correctly? See? Every time I press it, it should jump. I press it and it jumps. If I kept it pressed all the time, it would be energized all the time. Okay, until you see. Let's see, I'm going to energize it. It just doesn't make good contact there. Okay, let's see if I can record it properly now. I have the relay here and now I'm going to press it and I'm not going to let go. So, it should make a click, but not a click, because a click means that it connects and disconnects. A click means that it stays connected until I release it. Since I'm going to leave it permanently connected, it only has to make one click. There you see. Now, yes, a click. There it would be fully connected. But to verify this, we're going to put both in continuity and while it's fully connected, it should be beeping all the time. Okay, come on, I'm going to remove it. It's already tripped. 
And now what we're going to do is put the tester that we have in continuity. Let's put it to one side. Let's see, I'm going to let go of the camera for a second. Let's see. Yes, here so that I can. Come on, positive with positive. Okay, there's no positive here, I don't care. Either one. One probe to one side and the other probe to the other side. Okay, there we have it. Now, every time I energize it, it has to make a sound. Apart from the click of the solenoid, the continuity beeper has to make a sound. Let's see if it's true. See? As long as I have it there, the beeper has to make a sound. If I only give it a little bit, the beeper will make a sound and nothing else. Look. And if I leave it connected for a long time, the beeper has to keep beeping all the time. Let's see if it's true. See, there it is, energizing itself all the time. Here the engine would be turning all the time until we release the starter button and it would let energy pass. So there we have it. We have already seen the very simple way to check that a starter relay is working properly and we can do it either by continuity or simply by the sound, okay. All we need is the motorcycle battery and some alligator clips, okay? And a tester and that's it, there's nothing else. In this case, where we have the clamp, in addition to these two skewers that I recommend, I'm going to put in the description of the video, as I've been doing lately in all my videos, I'm going to put the corresponding Amazon link for purchasing both the alligators and the TES. As for these two skewers, EH, I always look for the cheapest one and if you buy them through that link, apart from saving you the trouble of looking for them because I've already worked hard to find the cheapest one, you're contributing a small percentage to the maintenance of this channel. And that's it, it's that easy to check a starter relay or starter solenoid. Okay, come on, well, I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a like. I recommend that you subscribe and click the bell so that you'll always be informed when I upload new videos, which is every two or three days. Come on, bye, greetings.